Hi, welcome to the 23rd day of the Proven Sales Letter Breakdown series I'm doing. Uh, this week we're focusing on lead types. So if you're not familiar with that, it's basically the first 100 to 500 words of a copywriting piece, which basically just hooks people in emotionally so that they actually read the rest of your message. And I've covered several types of leads before, and now this is going to be the last one, which is perfect for colder audiences, for people who don't even know that they have a problem, who couldn't care less about your specific product or even the solution that you're offering. Uh, this is for extremely cold audiences uh, who are skeptical and who basically you wanna hook in but you don't know exactly how. It's the perfect solution for that. And a shout out for this specific uh, example goes out to Derek Johansson from Copy Hour. Uh, and if you want to learn more about this this whole copy hour things, uh, I, I'm going to leave a link uh, below this video. You might want to check it out. Uh, but with that being said, let's just jump into it. So the first thing that we have to know about proclamation leads, this is called a proclamation lead because it basically um, it proclaims some new bold prediction or like it foreshadows a big crisis or something like that. And the reason for that is none other than to have some news value to people and to just uh, basically uh, give them a strong enough reason so that they actually read the headline complex and they start reading the, the message itself. That's the only job of this proclamation lead. Obviously, how you're gonna use a so-called big idea with this will also be affected by the lead type because with the proclamation lead, uh, you're going to have to um, have a lot more proof in the promotion, for example. So this specific example, it's 31 pages. So think about it, 31 pages. And uh, probably the reason why it's so long, even though it's just selling like a $47 subscription product, that's it. But the reason why it's so long is because people are cold, they don't know about this, they have other things to do uh, in life. And then if you make a bold proclamation, you really, really have to back it up with proof. Otherwise, people are just not going to believe it. I mean, they're skeptical. They've been told all, all sorts of various things before. So you really, really have to, uh, again, hit that uh, level uh, in which they are actually going to listen to you and also you have to make it so that the proclamation uh, fits in perfectly with the already existing business climate or social sociological climate or political climate or something and i think this is a very very good example for it now because it's so long um we're actually going to only be looking at the lead the headline and the lead as well which is basically two pages and then in the next video i'm going to look at the rest as well so uh if you really want to if you want to make sure that you don't miss that one then i really encourage you to subscribe right now and to click that little notification bell under this video because then you'll be immediately uh alarmed when I'm gonna release the next video. You're going to be immediately notified and you'll be able to watch it so that the whole promotion makes even more sense for you. But this is really, really powerful stuff. And this is the highest level copywriting there is because this was um, basically published by Agora Financial, which is like $1 billion plus uh, revenue per year uh, or like valuation company. It's a direct response copywriting company and they specialize in these types of promotions. And they actually create like tens or even hundreds of thousands of customers with, with a promotion like this. So it's re really something that you can you can model your, your business after if you want. So first of all, uh, we begin, we have a pre-head part, we have the main headline and we have like a sub-head part. So the pre-head goes like this. DC Insider issues dire warning. If you can't afford to lose 50% of your portfolio like you did in 2009, you must read this now. I think, you know, one of the, the uh, main objectives of this pre-head is to just qualify people and to make them read the headline. And I think this really does the job well because uh, for Agora Financial, the target audience is mostly made up of like senior citizens or like a little bit older people who are most likely Republicans, who have conservative views, who have money, you know, that they accumulated and they want to invest, uh, but like they're constantly afraid of, 
you know, being scammed by Wall Street or like the big banks or the establishment, okay? So this is a really, really uh, right side leaning copy as you're going to notice later on. But hey, one of the jobs of the, let's not get, let's not get political here, okay? So one of the jobs of, of a good copywriter is to really like figure out the type of messaging uh, that can crawl under the skin of a specific target audience. And this just shows how copywriters have a hard job to really nail the tone of voice that uh, has to be used with certain types of target audiences. So for this target audience, this is the perfect messaging that you have to use. The same copywriter could write a totally different types of message if he or she is good enough, um, like aimed at super liberal um, target audiences as well. But then he or she has to like completely rewrite the whole message and completely angle things from a different exam uh, angle in order to work. But for this example, uh, this is exactly what connects with so-called Grandpa Rick, who's like the target audience of Agora. So by saying like DC Insider, think about it. This validates a, a, an already existing belief that this target audience has is that there's a bunch of corrupt crooks in DC and then there are insiders as well who are trying to get the truth out. And then, you know, there's a doom and gloom type of atmosphere happening here, uh, which is really powerful, especially in nowadays, uh, nowadays, and this is a very, very uh, like recent promotion, and I'm doing this video in early February 2021. Um, so, you know, as with the coronavirus and, and like political climate and everything, you know, people are, are, they have this deep fear of losing their savings or like not being able to invest properly in the stock market. So uh, this is aimed at a fear based, like fear based emotions, because it targets people who are afraid to lose something. So if you can't afford to lose 50% and this like the target audience is going to go like, oh my God, what? of your portfolio like you did in 2009. So again, just this just shows how the copywriter knows exactly the target audience here because this is going to make the target audience feel like, no, not again, you know, like they almost get a heart attack because they probably lost a lot of money in 2009 and then they're really afraid. They know that something like that is gonna happen eventually because everybody's waiting for uh, a crunch now, but uh, because this this whole whole bull market is, is way too long, it seems unnatural to a lot of people and um, they're really afraid to lose it again. So then we have like a very strong command uh, that this is serious, so you must read now. And they, they will. Actually, I'm really curious about the heat maps uh, that, that's gonna happen on this page. So like how many people read this and what percentage of them goes down and down, I think is gonna be really, really red, uh, meaning that a lot of people read this. Uh, so this headline is gonna do um, a really good job at the heavy lifting. So then we go, this is the most dangerous crisis America has faced in 89 years. So this, this kind of presupposes a secret, like what, what's the crisis? Why is it dangerous? Like I knew it, I knew that those damn liberals would mess everything up, you know? This is what the target audience is thinking, uh, but like it's all tease, like they don't know exactly what we're talking about. And they, are, they won't know even until the end of the lead. They're, they're, the only way they're gonna find out basically is to buy the product, but they don't know this yet. Uh, and America has faced in 89 years, so since the Great Depression, basically. And then we have some subhead elements, which the first one just twists a knife a little bit uh, with one of the major pain points, because remember, this target audience is mostly Republican, and then the Trump effect is gone. So they know that uh, even though if they hate Trump, it doesn't matter because they know that like the stock market really uh, like overachieved and performed really, really well under, under Trump. Not necessarily because of him, but like a lot of things coincided. So uh, obviously, text uh, lowering and everything helped a bit. But uh, but yeah, this this is this connects with them again. The Fed has abandoned investors. So again, think about the current business climate in 2021 February. Like we live in a world of zero percent interest rates. Okay, so good luck getting meaningful returns in this climate. So 
what can they do? The only thing they can do is like they read this message now because they don't want to lose everything and they know that, you know, it's not easy to properly get returns in today's climate. And we're headed for a ma massive reset of the American economy that will wipe out millions. So again, massive reset. This is like uh, taps into their existing mass fears. And Eugene Schwartz, one of the greatest copywriters of all time, talked about how you shouldn't really try to motivate people into feeling something, but instead you should really appeal to their already existing mass desires and mass fears. So the target audience here is definitely expecting a massive reset. And by reminding them, you know, we create more fear inside them. Uh, and then, you know, the econ American economy. So this is going to be huge and it will wipe out millions. This is just like a dire warning and it's like twist the knife a little bit. So you see, we're already at like uh, 10 minutes in the video and all I covered basically is just like 50 words of copy or something. It's ridiculous. Think about it. But it's, this is what good copywriting is about. And how many things actually go into writing the headline? Like David Ogilvy, again, one of the best copywriters ever, said that, you know, most good copywriters spend about 80% of their total energy or effort uh, crafting the headline. Uh, so it's, it, it's really saying something. And now you know exactly why. So then we jump into the main message itself. And this is the lead, the part of the lead as well. So we start with the salutation, which creates immediate bonding. So dear fellow American, are you struggling to make heads or tails of the markets these days? Trying to find a reason to hang on for one more rally on Wall Street. So these questions basically, they come from so-called voice of customer data, which means that you know they come from a lot of research. So these are words that uh, our target audience actually uses and that's why the copywriter uh, used it here so that you know it it connects with them even even more if so you are not alone so uh, you know after asking them three questions this is kind of like a relatively standard way to like start a sales message asking them three questions and then saying if so you're not alone uh, this basically makes them feel understood after all, this kind of confusion and uncertainty is why we haven't seen a complete sell-off in markets yet. So first of all, this again taps into the current business climate and it's also reason why copy. So it gives a reason why this whole thing makes sense. And by saying things like, you know, drops, like sudden drops of five to 10% or more, this triggers a recent memory in them, which goes back to March, 2020, when like, uh, the first like mini uh, recession happened and then the market jumped like they I don't know exactly but it was like 30% or something in a few days or something and then obviously the market recovered a lot but like just in two days it was like 15% so that's pretty something um, and then we have some subtle unconscious nods from people. So this this whole thing, it's copy that basically makes sense to our target audience. Uh, and then after it, you know, we have philosophical questions, which, which is a really nice technique that I also like to use and I think it's powerful. Uh, and then this just, this just basically uh, plants the, the, the seeds of doubt in people. So it says that like the president has been telling us the economy is strongest it's ever been. Unemployment is near historic lows. We're putting American workers first uh, in the trade deals with Mexico, Canada and China. And the biggest tax cuts ever have put more money in the pockets of most Americans. But if it's all if all that's true, why did the markets begin to collapse in 2018? Come to a close, came to a close. How can we have a stronger economy with so many job opening openings, we can't fill them all. And yet the average worker paycheck hasn't budged in decades. How can companies be saving enough money they can afford to buy back over 1 trillion worth of stock in 2018? And yet these purchases have done nothing to support stocks. So uh, these are all philosophical questions that again, pre uh, like validate an already existing pre-belief uh, pre-existing belief in uh, in people in the target audience and this these these questions actually uh, build up frustration frustration that this this whole uh, dire warning actually uh, actually did uh, it started it and, and this just capitalizes on it and then you know the the writer I mean the the voice of this whole message 
which isn't the copywriter. So let's just call him the guru. So the guru is going to reveal a terrifying truth. And, you know, again, it's something that a lot of people, it just validates some of people's already existing fears. So we're at the doorstep of what I believe will be the most dangerous financial crisis America has faced in 89 years. So this is a bold prediction. Uh, and then, you know, he says one that will make the 2008 meltdown look like the good old days. So this dimensionalizes the whole thing. So, yes, you know, this might mean that, OK, it's going to be a financial crisis. So what? But like saying that it's going to be even worse than the 2008 and I lost so much money in 2008. The target audience thinks, oh, my God, I, I really have to pay attention. And then he basically uh, opens the loop by saying that today I'm going to expose the truth about why the Trump effect in the markets is grinding to a halt, uh, including the real reason Trump will never be able to drain the swamp and fulfill all his campaign promises. So um, I don't know exactly whether this is running uh, like right now after Trump has been uh, has been replaced by Biden, but uh, but it still applies to a lot of people. OK, also like drain the stump swamp this is very strong voice of customer data the, these are the words that our target audience uses here um then you know the writer teases the secret once again you know that he's gonna explain you know what's happening in re like in reality what's happening in the background and all these things just kind of make the target audience feel like those insider bastards you know it's it kind of acts like throwing rocks at, at enemies together. So what the copywriter is looking to do here is to um, build rapport with the target audience to immediately like trigger a few emotional uh, triggers that will cause them to like immediately like them more. That's why I'm bringing this information directly to you. So it's like I'm going to be your savior and I'm going it directly to you. So you're important. And so pay attention as well. So this is going to be a uh, a one on one conversation, basically. So he's going to reveal like who really pulls the strings in Washington. So so again, this validates the already existing belief in people that, you know, let's expose the establishment. Uh, that's their what they're feeling or thinking. Uh, we have some future pacing elements, even more future pacing elements, like future pacing of a bleak future. Normally, when you do future pacing, you uh, you paint a dream of how their life is going to look like. But this paint a, a bleak future of how, you know, everything is going to look like if this whole prediction uh, comes true. And uh, notice why, you know, this is all bolded and underlined as well. So as people are scrolling, some of them who are not reading, you know, they're going to catch this and they're going to be like, this is a second chance basically for for them to get absorbed emotionally into the whole message, which I think is, is really smart. Um, what I'm going to reveal to you today isn't a secret. So this is a bit weird because it is angled as a secret, but maybe the copywriter used this because um, the concept of secrets is already overused a bit, especially in a super uber competitive market like financial. And uh, this way, maybe it's it's kind of like a it flip the, flips the script a little bit in people. Uh, and then this one, in fact, it's one of the reasons President Trump won in the first place. So this brings back good memories in our target audience because they wanted President Trump to get elected and uh, this whole sentence, this part after the bleak uh, future pacing acts again as reason like why, like like how it all makes sense. And also like it agitates it uh, a little bit. So here's the big problem that's going to happen. And then um, and then this again connects a little bit with it's kind of like a, how should I say it's like a uh, an interesting slide of emotions because this one starts uh, starts them on a journey to like be afraid and and start to experience despair this just brings them up a little bit so it's like a little high uh, because they are gonna feel emotions of positivity as well but then we're gonna go down deeper 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 and deeper so it's like uh, it pulls them in emotionally even more because it has this this uh, type of effect so then this is basically the end of the lead. So uh, the writer says, that's why I'm going to explain it as simply as I can. That's the end of the lead. And then we have the, the first subhead, which is the current economic recovery is a sham. And then 
from here on out, it's gonna be mostly proofs. So I'm not gonna uh, like explain it right now. I'm gonna get back to this in a later video. But just if I start scrolling, like see how this is kind of like a uh, a dissertation or something that makes sense. So it's like a big analysis with charts, with numbers, with like a bunch of uh, of um, reasons that that makes sense. So it's. Uh, it's uh, it's logical, you know. This introduces the uh, the guy immediately. A picture with Reagan, like Reagan is the uh, is the real hero of our target audience. You know, they have good memories of the Reagan era, probably, and they really liked him. He was really popular with with our target audience. And then by positioning our expert uh, near Reagan, you know, it just builds immediate and extremely strong uh, credibility in in people. So that giving the message that he actually knows what he's talking about. So uh, it's interesting. I actually want to read it uh, like uh, to the end and I'm going to uh, do it and I'm going to hand copy certain parts of it. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's it for the lead right now. And as you can see, you know, just two pages, but like uh, we managed to do a, a 20 minute video and do believe me that I, I, I didn't even cover everything that's going on here so we could just go even more granular but not gonna do that right now but uh, it's super powerful and you anytime you have a chance to study something from Agora Financial you should because some of the best copywriters in the world and the highest copywriters in the world are working for Agora and you better believe that this was written by one of the best copywriters uh, in the world right now. So uh, kudos to them. Kudos to uh, Derek Johansson for for uh, giving me the tip on this one. And then, uh, yeah, that's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, smash the like button if you liked it. And also subscribe, share it, comment, you know, the good stuff that signals the algorithm that these videos are valuable. And then I'm going to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.